If you're not currently using pivot tables, this video is going to transform your Excel experience. Hi, I'm John and this is Up for Excel. Today we're talking pivot tables. I'm going to give you a complete overview of how to set up a pivot table, lay it out well, and there'll be plenty of tips and tricks along the way too. And if you want a copy of the spreadsheet I'm working on, plus the finished version at the end of the video, just click on the link in the description and I'll be sent straight to you. Let's get straight into it. When I first started using Excel, I started making the data look pretty. The moment I was presented with data like you see on the screen at the moment, I'd start tarting it up, maybe insert a few sort of blank rows and columns, just grouping stuff together, making it look good. But you know what? That was exactly the wrong thing to do. Excel works brilliantly when all the data is kept together, and that's exactly what we need to do right now to make sure our pivot table is going to be up and running as quickly as possible. So, for example, I've got all my data together at the moment, and if I want to sort, I can just go here, for example, hit that sort button, and you can see it will automatically highlight all of my data because it's kept together. Similarly, hitting subtotal button again, and all manner of other formulas and functions work much faster when the data is like together like this. If I, for example, insert a row at the top, which might look nice, for example, I might be able to, you know, maybe make it slightly smaller or something. I think that looks quite, quite good. But if I now hit this button, I get an error. It can't work out where my titles are and what can it be subtotal. So, and this is exactly the same for pivot tables. So if I just undo that a couple of times, right, I click anywhere in this data at all. I can go to the insert button and hit pivot table and it will automatically select the area of my data. And that is exactly what you need to do. I remember once I was working for a company and I produced a pivot table to work out the best selling products and I went over to my boss amazed that I found a drill was the best selling product from the previous month. They were also amazed. So when I went back and checked the data, I'd made a schoolboy error. My pivot table was not picking up the entire range of data. I'd set it up for a previous month, but this month more data had come in and I hadn't corrected the range that the pivot table was looking at. To avoid this problem altogether, what you can do is turn your data into a table. That way, whenever new information comes in, it will automatically change the pivot table range as well. And it's very easy to do. If you click on the insert tab, click on the table button rather than the pivot table button. If you do that, it will automatically select the data area because we've automatically, we've grouped all our data together. Hit OK. That will create a table. And then we go to insert and then click on pivot table. And you can see now that on our create table pivot table box, the table range for the pivot table is shown as table one. It's actually picking up our table. Now that's absolutely key because if we, um, if I scroll down to the bottom of this, you'll see we have eight, uh, it, it finishes on row 8,400 at the moment. I'll just hit okay on that and go back a sec to this. Um, if I now add another number, order number on the bottom, let's just make a random number up, you can see straight away that the, the table range increases. So going back to this pivot table here, this range on this, if I show you this, is still table one, and it's now including that new row. And that's exactly what we want. So that's how we're going to proceed. OK, we have our table set up and it includes all of our data. So we're now going to insert a pivot table. So go to the insert uh, tab and we can click on recommended tables, recommended pivot tables. And if you do that, what you'll get is 
a few example pivot tables that we could create with this data. And it might be that one of those is perfect for you. I'm going to cancel that because I want to show you how you can set it up from scratch. So click anywhere in the table, hit insert pivot table. It's automatically picked up all our table data, which is what we want. And then you can have this in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. If you want it an existing worksheet, it might be that you want to show it, say, right next to your data. And you would just click in that box and click where you want the pivot table to start. I think best practice really with pivot tables, you can move them later, is to put them in a new worksheet because then you get the full um, range of being able to move things around to where you want. So I'm going to hit OK on that and that's going to give us a brand new sheet and there's two things about this. The first is we have a pivot table area up here and then on the right hand side we've got the pivot table fields box. Now you can drag this to wherever you want. So I'm going to drag it over here and probably put it somewhere about here, for example, at the moment. Okay. You can also resize this if you want, but I think probably something like about, maybe something like that is probably ideal. If you want to put it back, you can double click on it. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to move it over here so you can see it more clearly in this demonstration. So the way this box is laid out um, is you have all of the different column headers from your data down here and then you have these four boxes that you can put things in filters columns rows and values so these are the rows the columns and the values in the pivot table and filter um, will, will let you to add something on the top so I'm going to add sales as my values. So I'll put sales in and straight away you can see one, it calls it sum of sales and two, it puts the total sales value over here. Now, if you then want to see, say, sales by um, customer segment, we'll put that down there, you then get your customer segments listed and your sales and the same grand total you've had earlier. Now it might be we want to put some columns on this so we could drag ship mode down there and then we get columns for the various shipping modes. And as an example of a filter we could perhaps put province in and then what that does you've probably just seen it puts something at the top here which allows you to click on there and you can pick any province you want so Newfoundland for example and then that basically shows the same table but just Newfoundland now what if we thought we wanted to see sales and profit so we could add profit as another value down here now what that's done I'll just move this down slightly so you can see it not particularly great looking way of doing things so what we might be better off doing is we can actually move this value thing to somewhere else so we can have instead of us columns we can move it to rows and then you'll see what it's done is it's put sales and profit on each line which that might be one way of doing it or um, we move it back there but we could move ship mode down there for example and then we'll have two columns the only things that are in columns are the sales and profit so and we've created this sort of subtotaling look now we can then click on all for example to get it all back or we as you can see we've got this button here select multiple items so we can tick that and then we can just exclude for example you know a couple of them and, and have multiple items going on so we could do that now I mean, it tells you that we've got multiple items but it doesn't tell you what they are so we'll click back on all and it tells you that you've got all and we know we are good to go we can also within this 
change the order at which things are grouped. So for example, if we wanted, at the moment we have customer segment and then we have our ship mode underneath. We can drag and drop that one up and then we have ship mode as our main ones, main um, totals. And underneath we have each customer segment. So that's the basic way to create a pivot table and um, position the data where you want. And you'll see that this is can be way faster than trying to subtotal or sum up data in an existing table with formulas. So step one was setting up the data, making sure that's correct, putting that table in place so that do not go reporting incorrect figures next time they come in. I then talked to you through how to set up a pivot table, how to move the layouts around. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget you can download the spreadsheet by clicking on the link in the description below. And then you can see, you can play around with the pivot table or you could just use it to work back through this video and start from scratch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it out. And don't forget, let's get these Excel skills up and these task times down. See you soon. Nothing will save you more time in Microsoft Excel than learning the shortcut keys. That's why I've pulled together this one page cheat sheet of all the everyday essential Excel shortcuts. These are the shortcuts I use day in, day out to get fast results and save me time in Excel. I'm giving this away today completely free. It's part of the promotions for this channel. Just click on the link with the description and I'll send you this straight away. Don't waste any more time in Excel. Get this free cheat sheet right now. Click the link.